Hey yo, what's going on with the viewers of the tube? It's Tyler here of Chico Crypto. Not coming to you live, not in my Chico studio. I am in sunny Portugal. Oh yeah, Chico has hit Lisbon. So I should be called Lisbon Crypto or should I be called Chico Crypto of Lisbon? Am I moving here? Um, yeah, no, the city's awesome, you guys. I'm so excited to be here. It's blockchain week. There's a bunch of events going on. I'm actually gonna be going to the Gnosis event here in a little bit, so that's exciting. But let's first get into the crypto content before I start bragging about my adventures in Lisbon. So Bitcoin, I haven't been able to talk with you guys in a little bit, you know. Bitcoin is up and up, you guys. We have actually officially broke and closed 60K BTC for the very first time. Yes, a weekly close of 60K. Um, when we last broke 60K back in April, you know, it wasn't a weekly close, it was just a daily close. So now that we've closed weekly above 60K, that is, in my opinion, extremely bullish. Yeah, big time bullish, Novogratz bullish. Um, Bitcoin being above that and holding above it, it's so much different than last time. Don't you guys think? Like, last time getting up to 64K, it was just hype, hype, hype. Hype, you know? It didn't feel like we should have been there, you know? Um, this time, now that we're above it, you know, and we're holding above 60K, it's like, oh, we're above 60K. Oh, that's not that crazy. It's crazy, you guys. Um, and it's extremely good for the markets. So we're actually pretty close to um, Plan B's prediction. He actually predicted that we were gonna close this month of October off at 63K BTC. So we're only 1,000 away from Plan B's close prediction, and we're also about 3.2% and a little less, a little more, um, to the old all-time high of 64.8K. So it's very possible this week um, we are going to break 64K, up to 64.8K, and we're going to close above the old all-time high. Um, I do personally, personally think that's going to happen, but I'm going to save that for tomorrow's video. I don't want to ruin that surprise. Um, I have a really good video tomorrow that's diving deep into price predictions as well as um, the Bitcoin ETF, which we're going to talk about a little bit today, but um, I really don't want to spoil that surprise. And again, I'm going to be shooting that video on the streets of Portugal, so I'm going to be out and about and on the town and maybe have some people walking behind me like I used to do in Miami. So it's going to be really cool, you guys. I can't wait for that video. But let's also talk about the Bitcoin ETF. So last Friday, the Bitcoin ETFs, it's not just an ETF, a single one, multiple Bitcoin ETFs were approved by the SEC. So the SEC has finally gave a green light. We've tried over and over. Many different companies, many different um, entities tried to get an ETF passed, but the SEC always said, nope, nope, nope. Well, they have finally approved a batch of them, you guys. And there's actually one, um, a single one, that is going to be trading here soon. So if you saw the title of my video, I said, be careful, something big and unexpected is going to be coming within 24 hours by tomorrow. Um, well, on Tuesday, tomorrow, ProShares is expected to start trading on the New York Stock Exchange. So this is big, you guys, because it's the first Bitcoin exchange traded product, a regulated product, that will be live on the New York Stock Exchange. So a lot of these institutional guys, you know, some of them are dipping their toes, but a majority of them aren't because of the unregulated nature. Now they have a vehicle, an avenue to start dipping their toes into Bitcoin without actually holding the asset. Now there's arguments for this and there's arguments against this. Um, and I'm gonna get a little bit more into that tomorrow, but it is good in the short to midterm, you guys, because there's um, 
a lot of money that is going to push up the price in the short to mid term. So the 100K, you know, prediction, 135K by December, that is not out of the realm of possibilities, you guys, because as the hype of the ETF comes, um, it's happened with other commodities, we have extremely bullish markets after the pass of the first ETF. It happened with gold, it happened with silver, it happened with real estate, it happened with tech stocks, and now it's going to happen to the Bitcoin markets. So personally, um, I'm for the ETF in the short term, but as we know what happens with um, the commodities products, after a while, after that full bull cycle, it's usually they get held down a little bit. Um, gold was held down for 10 plus years before it rebroke um, its ETF high of 1800. You know, it took up to 2018, I think, until gold was getting back to that level. So if this is going to happen, if we're going to have an extremely bullish end of the year, which I mean, all signs point to that, as we know, there is going to be another alt season. Of course, the cycle is going to happen, you know, first Bitcoin gets the big investments and large caps and small caps and then shat coins. That same thing is going to go around. And then eventually at the end of that cycle, everything just goes crazy. So we're going to have that next alt season. And like I predicted in one of my candid videos, just like this, probably two weeks ago, three weeks ago at home, I was predicting that there was going to be a certain coin that breaks out in the top. 10 because they were going to launch a special part of their technology well that ended up happening you guys i was spot on with it too um polka dot announced that their parachains were coming in mid-november so the first parachain auctions are going to be happening um mid-november so in my candid video, I actually said the reasoning behind this. I was like, well, Kusama is ending their second round of parachain auctions towards, you know, the middle um, 10 days into October. So I predicted that the, the polka dot parachains would be coming one month after that. So around the middle of November. And that ended up happening, you guys. So I'm super excited because, of course, I hold Polkadot. Of course, I hold Kusama. But it's also good for some of the projects um, that are going to be launching. So a lot of people are wondering what's going to be the first, you know, parachain that wins. Personally, I think it should be a DeFi protocol, but not necessarily just a DeFi protocol in itself. It should be a, an app, a layer um, that allows more than just one, you know, DeFi application. And, you know, Akala, I have heard, is going to be pushing for that first, you know, auction win. But I personally hope and think it's going to be Moonbeam. Uh, they're known as Moon River on Kusama, but um, having that EVM compatibility, having the EVM layer and the ability for Ethereum smart contracts is only going to be good for the Polkadot ecosystem in the short to mid term, because we will be able to have, you know, Ave poured over. We'll be able to have, you know, possibly a MakerDAO poured over. We'll be able to have all these big DeFi applications port over to the Polkadot ecosystem in a snap. And getting that type of DeFi hype and um, power on the Polkadot ecosystem it would be massive for, you know, our holdings as a whole. I'm one of the only YouTubers that supported Polkadot from the beginning, but now that the pair chains are coming around, you're seeing a lot of YouTubers, Twitter influencers who are polka dot experts, but you guys should know who the real OG is. Um, and now I want to finish this video off with something that's ne not necessarily good. Um, Ohm, Olympus Dow, was actually getting hit hard. Um, it's been getting hit hard over the past few days, down 20% the day before, down 20% today. I think it got into the 700s today. And a lot of that has to do with a review, a collateral review by MakerDAO. So MakerDAO actually put out reasons why they wouldn't onboard Ohm on as collateral for MakerDAO and DAI. Um, and one of the biggest reasons was the admin key. So there was a lot of um, questions about how the admin key is ran. And of course, I've covered this before. Um, according to Olympus DAO documentation, it is a four of seven multi-sig. Um, but with version two of Olympus DAO, they, too, they do plan to eventually 
fully decentralize that. They're going to take um, the community and DAO so they actually are controllers of the admin key. So the treasury, um, which is growing, I think, into the billions of dollars, you know, the home treasury is it's outstanding how big it's growing and how distributed it is. It's not only ohm tokens, it's, you know, some LP tokens, sushi tokens, other DeFi protocols are in there. And they're also voting on onboarding Bitcoin into the ohm treasury. So it is a very distributed um, treasury. Now, having it controlled, you know, by a set of four to seven people that no one knows who they are, that's not necessarily a good thing, and that's one of the reasons that, you know, MakerDAO is like, no, we're not going to onboard it. But when V2 comes out, and I'm hoping, I'm hearing rumors that it could be in the next couple of weeks, that is going to take a lot of those, you know, questions away. And eventually, I do think Ohm could become collateral on top of MakerDAO if all the, you know, reasons they said they're not going to do it are solved with version 2. But if you're looking for a project like Ohm um, with those high APYs, so there's been some forks of Ohm out there, and some of them are decent. I think Time is one of them. It's doing pretty well. But there's one that's coming out, and I think today is when it goes live, actually, and that is ClimaDAO. So A, Clima was the token you could receive in the um, Copper Fair launch, and um, I think it's pumped to like about $1,500, and in the Copper launch, you could have got it as low as like, I think, 70 bucks. I got mine for around like 120 something like that. Well, that is going to be providing extremely high APYs. So if you've seen climate dow is going up and ohm is going down i mean a lot of that does have to do with maker dow but a little bit of it has to do with people transferring money out of ohm and into a clima or a clima dow because they can get higher apys because clima is a fork of ohm and the ohm team is actually helping clima um, build it out so don't be necessarily scared, shocked. I mean, lots of projects go through this. I mean, there's worse teams with, you know, only one person controlling an admin key out there. Um, they do have the plans to decentralize, and it's a top hold of mine, and I um, trust that they're going to do well. Well, you guys, um, again, I appreciate you tuning in to the candid video. Um, I know you want some regularly produced content that is coming, like I said, hopefully tomorrow. I still got to hopefully shoot it and not have any issues you know with the camera because i'm not a cameraman so hopefully i can figure it out myself but the next time i'll be seeing you is on the streets of lisbon so i'll see you guys next time cheers